the and the Covercities, uh, the Covercities Alliance. We are this uh, global alliance, uh, this global family, uh, learning together and also asking how to unlearn from um, uh, well, all, all 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 kinds of options, all kinds of uh, ways that we have of exchanging knowledge knowledge and um, throughout the world. This film festival is special for uh, those people that uh, through audiovisuals and also podcast. Uh, we, we we had also that call, but uh, right now with the Kutisan Film Festival, we are honoring, we are celebrating uh, the audiovisual um, way, the audiovisual ways, you know, because there are lots of ways, and that's uh, what we are also today uh, going to hear and to listen and that. That's the invitation. Also, you to go to the um, to the web. I'm going to repeat it as new people is going to is, is arriving. Please go to the link and watch the films. Uh, enjoy them for a while. It's uh, it's a beautiful and very diverse composition, <laughs> collective composition, and as it is today. So I'm going to go one by one, almost. Uh, and uh, directly, I'm going to present very shortly, and then uh, I will uh, ask you, uh, as you guys to guys and girls to creators to just speak for a couple of the, of uh, minutes. So we will have a round of uh, listening to you, and then we will open a little bit the chat if we have time, or uh, at the end also of this session. This session uh, is anti takes one hour, we have already 13 minutes on. Uh, we will have other 15 minutes if you have uh, uh, people here that are uh, just in, uh, joining, you will have time also to speak like directly in individual rooms with the creators, okay? So um, first I'm going to um, call, I have here an order of what I prepared. I'm first gonna talk with Anna, um, she, Anna Pura, with Isadora Martins and Tariq Fraik. Uh, she's uh, invited uh, because, uh, well, they, they have a beautiful piece that I'm going to share with you all this information in the chat. I'm going to do this also with all the videos. Okay. Oh, it says it's too long for, first I'm going to, yeah, because uh, it's, it's inspired in so many ways. So Ana Pura, I'm going to, wait, 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 Ana. Hello. I put this, all this information, you to have it in the chat. Um, is bringing uh, this, this beautiful attention eclipse video. Yeah, that I, I hope you have the time to go and see. Uh, I, I want to just read this, this uh, part, the authentic and pure values, truth, beauty, and goodness in the activity of a human being are the result of one and the same act, a certain application of the full attention to the object. Um, Anna, as it says in her uh, biography, wandered an apprentice, wanderer is an a wanderer, an apprentice since birth, Anapura is an attention uh, activist who designs regenerative experiences under the principles of love, clarity, transformation, and high level fun. So very welcome, Ana. You're in Sao Paulo. Um, please, uh, I don't know, uh, present yourself and your video. I, I know you did this in a collective way. We've brought lots, lots and lots of feelings and questions in our bodies uh, after watching this, uh, your, your film. But uh, please present yourself and uh, develop a little bit uh, from there. So we, we can uh, start this co-creation of conversation. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you for creating this space. Um, I wanted to point out just a couple of things. Uh, the first one was that Attention Eclipse was born out of an artistic experimentation among friends. It just happened. Uh, I knew this text by Simone Weil. She is a French philosopher. Really amazing story, like in between of world wars, 
she just went on and worked in, in, in the industries and in farms. And she like her, what she brought to the world, uh, it was the world was, wasn't ready for that at the moment because she was bringing um, this connection between uh, social studies and justice movements uh, and spirituality and attention. And when I saw that text, so I've been, uh, I, I've been studying about attention for the past 11 years. Uh, for me, it's really the, the point, the, you know, the leverage point from which we can actually create the change that we want. And that starts from within ourselves, uh, influences our relations, and then transforms what we deliver back to the world. And when I saw the text, I invited a friend of mine. Uh, we met each other in another, in another Ecoversity um, project. It's called MOL here in Brazil. It's a community of self-directed learners. I told him about the text and I was like, yeah, I just found out that there's this method for reading philosophical texts. And then we invited Isa, who is also a partner into um, experimenting with us. And what we did was crazy. So what we did is that we read a text that was three pages long and we read it throughout two months. And, and during each session, we would read three paragraphs and then each person would take one sentence and repeat it and then kind of like open and, and just like let it flourish whatever was alive from that sentence. So it was this super slow, profound way of connecting to the text um, and not only to the text, of course, but everything that Vile like, brings up that. Um, attention is not a thing, that attention is uh, the hyphen between you and what you love. Or that attention doesn't come from will, like will is, you know, the hand that tries to grasp and control reality. But attention comes from desire that is what realizes, the desire that um, allows you to exist and me to exist through you. Attention as a matter of, of reality. So like we enter this universe, this attentional universe, and um, we created a script out of it. And we wanted to create the movie out of everyday images. Um, when I came to know about the Ecoversity film um, offering, I thought this can really work because it's such a simple structure. So it's a very simple practice of attention that um, can, it really can, activate so much inside of us given time and that space so that's uh, what I wanted to uh, stress today is um, the power of holding space holding space through silence and presence and what is it that comes up what is alive comes up and that is really the starting point for any kind of connection within ourselves with our groups with our projects and um, it's also really wonderful to see all the movies together so there was this one movie in the trailer that I spoke about relationships. So every you is one us. Cada, cada tú es un nosotros. And, uh, and that's the power of relations. So holding space for that and be attentive to that. Um, or also another one that spoke about turning perspectives into action. So Vial talks about attention as being perception. And how does that translate, you know, from that fountain source inside of us how does that translate into our hands um so yeah really wonderful to see all the connections and happy to be weaving them all here together thank you thank you anna um well i just want to remember today we also got to co-create the title together with all the creators about life is larger than noise by eccentric audiovisuals for reimagining life this is the title and le lovely how you are now also got to connect already somehow uh, what we are all, uh, all enjoying, enjoying together. And I hope you couldn't, can enjoy it with the film festival. Uh, we will have more time to develop. There's going to be lots of ideas and lots of uh, uh, very, very thoughtful and very sensible um, uh, words and intentions here. Uh, through this uh, panel, we will have, uh, as I was remembering, uh, we will have more time to talk with Anna individually in her room um, and talk uh, and get a, a little deep into her thoughts and her feelings through her video. But 
first I want to continue. Remember, you have all the info about also, also her her film in um, in the chat. But I'm going to continue and then I come back to Anna first presenting you uh, Abhijit and uh, Abhijit Sinha and Shafat Shan Bandari. Sorry for my pronunciation. That's okay. <laughs> um uh, they are here because they are also uh, the creators of a beautiful beautiful documentary i'm going to show you also through the chat and well this is the the the, the, the formal presentation but very shortly about uh, her film learning reimagine it you know this is uh, made by thousand shades of india um that's why Shafat is also here. He's also with the other creator there in the room. So yeah, uh, yeah, 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 they are both there. Um, and well, as I told you, I'm going to just read a little bit about the PG. He's the founder and CEO of an international non-profit organization called Project Defy. The film we are going to see talks about that. So uh, through his organization, he creates a new variety of learning spaces which have no teachers, exams, or curricula. Um, and from Shafat, uh, he's a writer, a journalist, a poet, a filmmaker, but as a filmmaker especially, he documents stories that matter, stories that are seldom told, stories that help you take a pause and rethink your reality. So with that, uh, uh introduction and um please shafat and a bg i don't i don't see a bg around ah okay, there is a bg hello bg please open your microphones and uh hello how are you how do you feel arriving and what can you tell us about this uh this documentary that we have uh, in this festival it's a great uh honor being part of this uh Having thank you for having us here and you know giving us this opportunity to showcase our work. Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to interact with all of you and to learn and understand uh, the different uh, perspectives and different quests that are happening uh, across the world in terms of you know reimagining education. Uh, we are uh, a media company with a difference, uh, a media company that does not indoctrinate that does not uh, you know, do the, the job of uh, conditioning the minds or uh, the, the, you know, the machinery, becoming the machinery of propaganda. So what we, th we, we see ourselves as uh, you know, a tool of continuous education. So when we think of education, we usually think of uh, you know, the universities and schools. And uh, as a student, I never liked going to school or ne never liked uh, going to uh, the university. Though I was a topper in the school, I never liked uh, being there. I, there was something that you know, uh, you know, put me off. Uh, there was something that was not appreciative or, of who I am. You know, I had to prove myself uh, through my marks, through my participation, through you know, a lot of different activities that they were expecting me to do. And when I went to the college and university, that actually, you know, got worse and I, I never felt at home. So there was something about this thing that education, I, we, uh, my brother, elder brother and I, we kept, kept thinking that, you know, there's something wrong with the system. I had I had not read anything about it. I had not learned anything about it, that there could be other perspectives and other alternatives, what had ha happened in the history and all that. But I in inherently, I always felt that there's something wrong. And uh, I was always on the pursuit of, you know, finding out. So, uh, and I happened to meet uh, my good friend Abhijit uh, purely by accident through a co-friend uh, as we started our journey in Thousand Shades of India documenting uh, different aspects of uh, Indian culture and heritage uh, and the lives and uh, the people who are making a change in the society. So I met him uh, wanting to document his uh, pursuit into change making. And he guided me to the Learning Society's unconference. And then uh, I, I got redirected to him. It's a long journey, uh, but uh, I'm glad I, I could meet him. And you know, when I saw the nukes, when I saw the uh, the project defy uh, taking shape uh, in the nooks in the slums of bangalore and other places i was like this is something that i always thought about uh, in terms of education though not completely but uh, he is wonderfully translating some of the ideas that i have always had and you know i think anybody who was natural to himself who's uh, you know who's close to his to himself 
will we'll always think and see that you know this is something natural that Abhijit is trying to do. Abhijit, you want to add more? Hey, no, I think you've <laughs> said so beautifully. I just, um, all I will say is it's uh, always a sacred experience to be uh, to be part of the um, Ecoversities community. Um, so thank you for um, for having me, for having uh, us here. Um, and yeah, this, um, I mean, this documentary, I think is um, a, a reflection by part of um, some questions that I started asking myself um, almost eight years ago. Um, and, and these questions um, had to do nothing with others <laughs> or, or trying to solve the education problem for, for anyone else. Uh, they were born uh, purely out of uh, my own experience with education and my own frustrations with it. Um, and then uh, I realized that I'm not the only frustrated one. And, and that was quite, uh, quite a solace. Surprising. Um, and so, yeah, so this is um, a beautiful reflection of, um, of the doing part. So the, the NOOC, these learning spaces, um, they have um, two angles to it uh, at minimum. One may say three, but uh, simply put two, two ways to look at it. Um, one way is to look at what happens there and what do people do, the doing. Um, and the other part is the being. And we really wanted to document this first part um, and to understand um, how, how this doing works out, but we didn't want to influence the story at all. So this is all Shafat and, and Tayyab. Uh, we, are, we are the subject <laughs> in, in some ways, the guinea pig, yeah. and uh, not, not the creators of the, uh, of the documentary. We are really, yeah, so really glad to have uh, Abhijit as uh, the collaborator, though uh, he was behind us uh, all the time, but uh, he never intervened. And he, we always had the editorial uh, independence and liberty to you know, see the story as we see it and portray it as we 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 saw it and we uh, absorbed it and that that way you know we could bring out the the, uh, the natural essence of uh, what abhijit is trying to do with uh, nooks and you know what what all the uh, the, uh, the facilitators and the participants uh, in the nook are trying to do so uh, you know uh, th that is what we are trying to do in thousand shades of india you know we had, uh, this is the reason why we strive to use audio visual medium to reconnect humanity with their inner self helping them rediscover their true essence so we, we seek to unchain the hearts and minds directing to the possibilities that, that are beyond obvious. You know, there are, there are these obvious conventions that people, you know, confine themselves uh, within. So we want to, you know, make people, you know, take a pause and ponder on the realities within them and around them and to, re to, and to reconsider. And this is what Learning Reimagined is about. It is our attempt to highlight and appreciate what is being done in this quest. It highlights what is possible and the possibility on this journey is are on this journey are endless. Thank you, Shafat. Thank you, Shafat. Um, well, we are having also a journey going now. Uh, very quickly, from one very from one film to another, from one creative to another, and there's lots of uh, um, beautiful um, ideas and. Um, acknowledgements, <laughs> I'm sorry for my that uh, I hope you are like uh, keeping there. So uh, after you can find that moment, uh, after we will have individual rooms, you can also develop a little bit this conversation with them, with our creators. Thank you very much, Shabbat and uh, uh, Bijit. We are coming back with you, but first we are traveling again to Mexico. Uh, where Pia and Ulises are. Hello, Pia and Ulises. Um, I'm welcoming you first, uh, telling, telling people, I'm presenting a little bit about your film, Casa Cultivo del Semillero. It's a documentary also uh, made by Pia Gonzalez Tova and Ulises Contreras Vega. I'm going to share a little bit about them right now, but first in the chat. I'm going to put this information. Um, 
Well, about uh, Pia, we can say she's a Mexican killer, mother and woman anthropologist, defender of human rights, creator and general director of the Center for the Development of Human Skills, El Semillero, Casa de Cultivo. And Ulises Contreras Vega, he was born in San Luis Potosí, Mexico, uh, specializing in audiovisual production and brand identity. He certified, he's a certified therapist in energy medicine by DCET the place where we did the global gathering 2019 of universities and co-founder of Navigations of Consciousness, a meeting space for practitioners of meditation and tools for the development of a better daily life. He's also a professor of fundamental of design at the Thinkers Institute and more, as you'll see in the biographies of both. Um, hello, uh, we, I, I will translate uh, from Spanish from Ulises. So um, we will have that, 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 and also is Pia here. Hola, Ulises, estaba haciendo una pequeña presentación. Eh, y bueno, por favor, eh, a, abordar esta presentación, cómo se sienten, cómo están, cómo, cómo, cómo les recibe el festival, cómo, eh, si nos pueden contar un poquito así de, de su film. Lo puedes hacer también en español y yo traduzco, o si prefieres Pia en inglés. Ok, gracias. Hey, he hello, everybody. Um, well, the film was um, made with the purpose to show our work here in the space or the center that we have been developing for almost 10 years. And uh, with Ulysses, we decided that we could um, show a little bit of our, of our doing or making daily uh through the voices of the people but basically uh what i wanted to show the, um through the images and the interviews it was um creo que va a ser más fácil para mí en español eh como explicar sobre eh el asunto de la hidra no las diferentes problemáticas que presenta este principio de la hidra capitalista por ejemplo no eh, pues que finalmente nos, nos apremia, ¿no? No solo desde el, el ámbito eh, educativo o formal, ¿no? Sino en nuestras prácticas cotidianas, nuestros afectos, eh, la economía, ¿no? Y cómo eso nos va justamente despersonalizando. Y mmm, que justo en el video se me hizo súper bonito, ¿no? Que eh, esta noción de individualidad, pues es parte de pues yo lo puedo decir, pensar como de una gran mentira, eh, como la compañera decía, ¿no? De la percepción de esa realidad, ¿no? Que, que nos oculta esa, eh, ese nosotros, ¿no? Entonces, el principio de la hidra precisamente está basado en ese, en ese que totaliza, ¿no? No sé si tengo que hacer pausa para... Sí, perdón. <laughs> so, Camila, okay. You... <laughs> I thought Camila was translating, and then he said for me to translate, and I, I missed. It. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. No, I can make a resume. Okay, good. Uh, so it was um, the general idea is this uh, Hydra, the capitalism, capitalist Hydra. Uh, there is more focus on this um, totalization of the reality. So what I wanted to show through the interviews, and um, it was more like the philosophical uh, proposal of the, of the space, like the semillero, that is, has been a, a work that, we, that I have been doing almost for about 10 years. And um, the problem with the Hydra is that mostly we, um, we attend or we focus or we try to solve things through just one area, uh, instead viewing the way that the, the Hydra works, like is a totalization of everything or affects uh, or the doings of the reality, uh, the health uh, is everything is interconnected, but in a way that is always focused as the video, uh, part of the video was saying, no, um, like individualist way, instead of seeing everything like 
we are all together and we are, as it say, we are the same or part of the same thing. So um, what we have been doing here is uh, trying to help or trying to re-educate in between us or educate, I don't like the word, but it's more like a co co aprender. I don't know how learn to together. The co learn. Uh, yeah. And um because I just don't share something. Because at the same time that I share something, I'm learning at the same time about the same thing. But it is an, in a different perspective. So that makes the project keep, it makes it keep growing. Uh, and, uh, and, um, and the purpose of the space and the interviews was to show that there are different people working all around different uh, areas because the problem that we have with this idea to be individuals only and I'm the main thing in the universe on, in the world. Yes, you are, but in a certain proportion because you are part of a, a whole thing. So, um, uh, and also one of the things that uh, I wanted to show as well through the, the video or the film, it was this idea of Sig Sigmund Bauman. And he was making this difference between individual um, identification, identidad, um, identification and identity, which is quite the opposite. The identification is something that you attach, but there is no feeling, there is no uh, philosophy, there is no um, background or roots that um, put you on the earth, like it makes you realize that you are existing through other people or other way of uh, the, 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 um, the life or the being in general and in this bigger idea that only the anthropocentric point of view. And the identity that is more connected and focus on having the roots and trying to keep um, this connection with the earth, uh, with the people, the traditions, the cultures. Because if we keep, um, if we uh, keep transmitting or learning other points of, uh, for example, healing or uh, um, learning about the world and uh, the society, et cetera. But um, in a way that we don't forget the, like the earth, for example, the meditation is very um, normal that uh, for example, the here, I don't know in other parts of the world, I suppose this is a, but um, there are practices that the mindfulness is being used here to, in the um, in the industry to keep the workers keep working harder and trying not to lose their attention as the 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 the, the other girl was saying um, not to uh, lose the attention of what they are doing to be more productive and that's not the purpose I think because she was saying is to be attention to create the reality in another way because you are conscious of it. And um, this idea of Bauman, it was a thing that I learned when I was uh, studying anthropology, that it really hits me uh, because this identification where, uh, well, now the, um, uh, la moda, uh, what the word Fashion. in English? Yeah, the fashion, fashion. Yeah, is a is a fashion thing. Is uh, the fashion now is to be uh, rolling uh, on a bike on the streets, but they are no focusing on the people. That there is no there is no fashion on rolling or uh, taking rides on bikes. 
is just the only way to be moving around the city, for example. Or um, other people that in my area uh, that um, takes uh, the saumerio or the cleaning, no? Because now it's a fashionable thing. But, uh, but it's not a fashionable thing. It's something that um, is, um, is explain it from another cosmovision of the world and the energy and their understanding the human body in a different way, but it's a fashionable thing. So the identification and the identity um, ha have different purposes. One of it is to consume, to have only uh, like a statement that it will be changed in a few years because um, there is uh, no monetization or there is no way to get money from it. And the identity is something that it gives you ground, that grounds you on your feet and keeps reproducing life in a very, or in a different or more honorable way. So that's the main base for me and the, the work that we do here in Semillero. And that's what I wanted to show through the voices of the people that have been working here just once or twice or in a regular way, because those people, um, mm, they live that way. It's a way of being, it's a way of uh, being here. <laughs> it's not only something like a, a standard. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, mm. yes, mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. yeah. thank you. Thank you, Pia. Thank you. Mm. Ulises, um, te voy a traducir. ¿Está bien? Eh, voy a... Ajá. So everyone, for the next part, Ulises will speak in Spanish. Um, and I'm going to open up a language channel. Um, if you go to the bottom of your the, uh, the, the screen, there's a toolbar. And it might be three dots that say more. And then an, uh, an option for interpretation. Um, so if you don't understand Spanish, just move to the English channel, and that's where I'll be translating. Eh, Ulises, voy a hacer, abrir un canal de interpretación, entonces te voy a estar escuchando español con, eh, y hablando en inglés. Okay. Eh, entonces, si me puedes, si puedes hablar un poco despacio, por favor. Ok. Sí. Muchas gracias por la invitación. Y pues me siento muy emocionado de poder estar aquí escuchando también, entendiendo lo más que se puede de los proyectos de los compañeros. Eh, yo les quiero hablar de, ya una vez que Pia les platicó un poquito sobre el concepto y cómo fuimos pensando el documental, me gustaría hablarles de mi experiencia. En lo personal, eh, el proceso de elaboración de este documental fue, pues sí, un proceso muy grande en el que yo no dimensionaba al inicio, en la planeación, todo lo que podía aprender. Eh, fueron alrededor de 17 entrevistas, entrevistas extensas, de las cuales eh, el trabajo de, de curación para poder sacar dos o tres minutos que sintetizaran el mensaje de cada persona eh, pues fue un trabajo como de eh, digerir toda esa información y darme cuenta que lo que uno a veces cree que es la vida, esa percepción propia de la vida, pues está muy, 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 se queda muy corta, pues. Eh, darme cuenta del valor de la comunidad y de cómo uno puede, uno no solo aprende y comparte, sino comparte y aprende. Como todo es eh, de ida y vuelta. Como el potencial de expansión de cualquier práctica es mayor si se expande a otros círculos. No solamente en donde uno ya está tranquilo, ya está a gusto. Entonces... Eh, Escuchar también cómo por más que uno busque esa individualidad, no se puede sino a través de, de los demás, 
de las experiencias vividas a través de los demás, con los demás. Y que eso me haya impulsado también a compartirlo en, en mis círculos y saber que, por ejemplo, la meditación se puede llevar a otros lugares. En mi caso, también soy profesor de un centro educativo, entonces poder eh, llevar la meditación, llevar la reflexión hacia otro grupo de personas que no tiene un contacto tan fácil con estas prácticas, fue, es algo de lo que le agradezco mucho a este documental, darme cuenta de que hay otras realidades, de que las percepciones son súper distintas y que todo es válido y que de todo se puede aprender. Gracias Ulises, lindas, sí. lindas linda reflexión y palabras. Eh, we, we will continue, vamos a continuar en inglés, vamos a continuar con el siguiente creador eh, y van a tener un espacio después para que la gente pueda charlar con ustedes. We are coming back to the original uh, channel. Uh, as we are traveling again, thank you very much, Ulysses and Pia. We're traveling back uh, in this journey of uh, creators and films today to India. And uh, now I'm inviting, uh, we're inviting Dilip. Hello, Dilip, how are you? Hi. Uh, hello. From Dilip, we, he's sharing with us the, his film, Are Mountains Living Beings? I'm going to show you the, put you the link and all the information again here in the chat. So, um, so you can also go and please remember, go and enjoy all the films in the web page. Well, um, Dilip uh, had a thriving corporate and business career, which he ex uh, exited at the age of 37 to volunteer for environmental and educational causes with Sonam Wangchuk of Ladakh. Sorry for the pronunciation. A few years back, he started the GED Foundation uh, and works on ecological restoration and regeneration in India's, in India's Maharashtra, Gujarat, and Rajasthan. Okay, um, that was, sorry again for my pronunciation, Dilip, please. Just um, open your microphone and uh, share a little bit about uh, your film. How are you? Your life there, but also your projects, but also uh, weaving with all this uh, information, all these ideas that all the other creators also brought to this uh, meeting today, the biocentric in audiovisuals. Hello, Dilip. How are you? How are you? Uh, sure. Thank you so much. I'm audible, right? Or just to my disturbance? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I've been, I'll go to the film and the context to it. Uh, I've been tracking for nearly 20 years. And last year I did my 100th track uh, to base of Kanchenjunga, which is the highest peak in India. And after the 100th track, uh, there was, so, so in all the tracks, obviously the love for the forest, the waters, the clouds, the mountains, the culture, the people, all those things were very attractive. And that is what I think attracted me to do track because I could sense life whenever I used to go on mountains and be in nature and be in the rivers and the villages. Uh, so there was a thought that, okay, if there was no mountain, uh, what would it look like? So in last one year, I probably, to compensate for those 100 tracks, I went to 100 mining sites, sites where they do mining to remove all the minerals and uh, jewelry, gold and uh, lithium and iron and whatever. So I visited nearly 100 mining sites and uh, it was a disaster, I would say. A uh, disaster from various perspectives that one hand, uh, the mountains where I used to go were so lively full of life and things. And on the other side, all the mining sites, there was not a single mining site which was in good condition, be it in terms of the habitat, be it in terms of people, health, forest, river, water, everything was like totally almost gone. All the mining sites had a similar feature. And when I dwelled deeper into it, uh, there was a realization that everything that human consumes either comes from 
plants uh, flora or it comes from fauna and if it doesn't come from flora and fauna the only place where it all comes from is mines whether the mines are on mountains on land or on ocean be it oil be it gold be it jewelry be it our cars be it our uh, whatever we wear whatever we throw whatever we consume everything comes from mines and this whole capitalist consumerist narrative which is making us consume more and more is basically cutting those mountains and when the mountains are cut uh, i could see the condition of the mining site and therefore this whole thought of uh, dwelling whether mountains are living beings or non living beings and i researched and i've been studying philosophy for many years and most ancient philosophies considered mountain as living beings it is only last few hundred years that some intelligent person change the narrative to say they are non living beings so that we can extract the resources without any guilt or pain or feeling and be happy with all the consumerism narrative so the, so, so the whole idea point i'm trying to make is that narratives the narratives that we live in in current time are so powerful that we don't really use our logic or reasoning mind we may be thinking that we are the most intelligent species but actually we are not logical or reasoning mind we are conditioned by the times and the by the narratives and the belief system that is being fed to us that is being taught to us and uh, it is uh, so the whole idea was can we again change this narrative to say that okay mountain are living beings and if they are living beings we would treat them very differently we would see them very differently we would consume very differently we would uh, you know the rivers would be very different and uh, you know this whole uh, mountain living being and non living being uh, change makes a lot of difference because when we are considering them as non living beings we are not just uh, you know damaging the villages and the countryside but we are also uh, you know polluting the cities with garbages and dump yards uh, so it's like dual damage that we are doing just because the narrative has changed in last few hundred years uh, so yeah it's a combination of uh, capitalism consumerism but also the religion and the belief system and ecology and stuff like that and therefore i want to promote this idea of can we consider them as living being and will that narrative maybe hopefully change things maybe 100 years down the line uh, so yeah that's the film all about uh, do watch it and share your perspectives also thank you so much great dilip thank, thank you for you. being part of the festival too for bringing a uh, all of uh, all of your your hard your work to the to this huge spectrum of you can you can see as i was telling you we have more than 15 films in this festival and today we are with this four um films and uh, their creators please we don't have too much time we are going to start uh, preparing the individual rooms where we want that time to at least have a, a, a little bit more space you to talk directly with the, the creators we are going to have uh, one room for anna uh, i'm going to to give you uh, uh, like sierra we are going to to tell you she's going to be maybe in room one, sierra sí. Yeah, so uh, if you want to go and talk with Anna a little bit. Meanwhile, I think it's it will be nice if you creators have any anything you want to maybe um, observe or right now like uh, you free free uh, free like feel free to open your microphones if right now you want to comment the creators especially. Um, Now we are going to have Shabbat. You want maybe to talk? He's going to be in room two with Ab Abijit. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Ulises, Pia, she's they, she's go, they are going to be in room three. Ustedes van a estar en el en un salón tres. Tienen un ratito, verdad, para quedarse 15 minutos. No es mucho más. Okay. Okay. And Dilip, you are going to be in room four. Okay, there's going to be four rooms. You can choose whoever you want to go and uh, continue listening or asking or just comment. This is a free space where we don't want uh, to, to, to guide in any way. We just want it to uh, maybe your feelings uh, and uh, 
and what 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 happened here in this conversation that made made you vibe, just guide you to 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 all these beautiful beautiful people from all around the world. You see, we have all the spectrum in the Echoverse. Sierra, how is it going? Ah, okay. Thanks, Camila. I just opened the rooms, um, so they're named. Um, so for Dilip, Anna, Abhijit, P and Ovisis, uh, please go to the room that's yours, and then everyone else, you can choose which room to, to join. Just hover your, your mouse over the the name, and to the right, there's a should be a join link. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone. Also, um, yeah, we'll come back after the the breakouts, maybe, and do a little exchange before we before we leave. Um, but we'll have approximately 15 minutes in the breakouts. Welcome back, everyone. I just um, wait for others to come back in just a few seconds. Yeah, there's a couple of rooms. Yeah, so but we, we can already start like uh, thanking and um, all the people that came, all the creators. I suppose they are all arriving. Sometimes it, it it makes people to get out from from the Zoom room, so um, we are also waiting all to come. But yes, we have we have just five minutes left, especially for creators. But right now, for anyone, if you want to open your microphones and um, start like uh, this very quick check out, but uh, also we will, we would like to hear how are you. A feeling how was your rooms also your individual rooms i hope you had uh, nice chats and uh, nice conversations and especially with sierra i think we are very very pleased and very as we said in the beginning and i use all the time this this word honored because we are really honored of having you all uh, and with your work here thank you very much anna shabbat Dilip. Uh, BG, uh, Ulises, Pia. Thank you so much for having us. It was wonderful be being part of this interactive session. Would love to be part of this in the future. We'll do more together. Thank you. Definitely. Yeah, my session was really alive just by listening to what happened to people because of attention and we kind of like weave together and so i'm really hoping to see what we can do with our films how we can showcase them and watch with other people and see what comes up like things come up and that's really transformational so yeah let's let's keep on doing that i just wanted to jump in and say um just before the festival we i did with a few friends some like mini about uh, like screenings and just in I, my friend's house. And so I highly recommend um, if you want to go watch them by yourself, but it's more fun to get a group of friends together and, and do a little, you can organize your own mini film festival and then, and then take some time after the film and like for discussion, right? Like I think that's one of the the hopes of when you, when you create something, um, create an audiovisual piece is that, um, that it sparks discussion and thought and, and in community. So yeah, I encourage that. And please go to the to the web that Sierra made. It's beautiful and very easy to navigate. So you can go and see all the films and uh, do it do it collectively, do it together. Uh, somehow these audiovisuals are always not just made collectively, but also with this intention. Thank you very, very much. Um, well, I just want also to take a little bit from what Anna said. This is film festival, but also all our work in publications with audiovisuals is made uh, also to make an audiovisual circle, you know, like a collective uh, co-creators uh, way of uh, learning together through ecoversity. So you are very welcome. Thank you very much, Anna, for bringing this also so um we are any yeah Sierra. i just wanted to we have a couple more minutes if anyone wants to pop in and say anything before we close uh, if you have time minus i just i just uh, have a, a concluding statement go for it yeah. 
uh, what I see is uh, any reimagining of edu education has to include the reimagining of the human being itself, you know, who a human being is. We have to identify who a human being is, and we have to redefine uh, what being human is. A human being that is a combination of matter and spirit, a human being that is a believer in the higher purpose, a human being that is both mindful and soulful is the need of the hour. Now, we, we, a lot of times we uh, you know hear about being mindful, but there's there's nothing about being soulful, being heartful, you know, being you know uh, connected, resonating through the heart. So that has to happen. If you don't, if you stop, uh, if you have this balance of mind and spirit, only human with the balance of mind and spirit can re-establish balance on earth. So that is my uh, concluding statement. Thank you so much, Shafat. Thank you everyone so much for being here, for your attention. <laughs> now it's time to go because the room is going to be uh, used. So thank you, thank you very much. If you want to stay for the next session, it's uh, food is education. Um, so you're welcome to stay. It's, it's starting in 15 minutes. Thank you. you have to go. Yep. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Anna. Bye, bye Shafa. Thank, thank you. Bye, Pia. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias a ustedes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hasta luego. Buenos días. Hasta luego. Buenos días. Chao, chao. Buenos días. Hasta Brasil. Thank you, May. Silvia. Great to meet you. Bye. <laughs> Bye bye, bye, bye Thailandia. Mana, Sashani.